Hallelujah. Now listen carefully. Thank you for your patience. Hear me. We are gathered here and you have spent a few days to tabernacle in the presence of God. Pastor, I can tell you that most people here, if we were to write a prayer request, more than 90% of people here, the limitation will be finances. Am I right? Please listen carefully. Listen carefully. So you don't have to receive this one next year. Next year you can come to receive something else. But not this one again. Listen carefully please. This finance thing is a very serious thing. Don't ignore it. You will spend your life paying the price. Don't mind ignorant people who say it doesn't matter. You see what? Lack of finance will punish you more than demon spirits. Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. Satan will allow you get the healing anointing a thousand times before you get the grace for prosperity. Because when you are healed, you are healed for yourself. But when you prosper, the work of the Lord can experience direct advancement. Please listen to me. Genesis 42 from verse 1 and 2. Every time Satan wants to destroy and disrupt your spiritual growth, especially ministers of the gospel, please listen. There is the most effective strategy is to bring economic destruction. Are we together? If Satan uses a man, it doesn't work. He uses a woman, it doesn't work. He uses cultism, it does not work. He will meet you at the gate of your need because he knows that you will hardly resist that temptation. Now, let me tell you how Satan destroys men, even people in ministry, because many people who are in various kinds of compromises today did not start like that. They started sincerely, but the reality of hunger, every time there is hunger, you will go where food is, even if it is Egypt. Egypt is not the place for you to go ordinarily, but when there is hunger, the Bible says, this is Jacob, verse 1. We'll read 1 and 2. Don't forget this scripture for the rest of your life. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn, where? The problem was not the corn. The problem was where it was located. There is power, but in a shrine. Somebody can give you money, but that place is in one coven somewhere. It says, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. He said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down hither and buy for us that we may live. And even though I'm a prophet without corn, I will die. A prophet without corn will still die. A ministry preaching the gospel without corn will still die. This is how, this is the genesis of how Israel later became slaves in Egypt. It was hunger that took them to Egypt. Every time there is hunger, Satan transports Israel from their place of covenant to their place of bondage. There are many men of God today who have joined so-called associations. They started with purity and serving God sincerely. But with time, when the issue of church building came, with time, and it's, it's easy for us to criticize people and point hands, but until we show people the way, we have no right to criticize people. That's why you must thank God for conferences like this. Because some of you, only God knows what you are about to join right now. Out of pressure. How are you doing it that it looks like you, you have your needs met? And somebody will tell you there is something. The only thing is that I can guarantee you, you will get that result. But are you ready to, to pay the price of the location? There are many sincere men of God who have soiled their hands today with practices that are demonic and some practices that are upright fraudulent. You know why? They are not insincere people. In fact, some of them still feel the pain while they are doing those things. 
when a man of God stands and forth, his children are unable to go to school. The school fees is increased. Membership is reduced. Covenant partners and helpers are gone because of the economy. Chances are excellent that he may bend to any suggestion. And some of you, let me tell you, if that temptation has not come to you, it's not, be, it's not because it cannot come. You've not gone far enough to need it. It's coming. Even Jesus, Satan told him, you will need resources. Bow to me and I will give this to you before you start your ministry. Because Jesus, if you don't bow to me, economy will pin you down. Jesus said no. When Satan comes to you when your stomach is full and you cast him, he will leave you. He will wait till you are hungry. And he said, like I said five years ago, are you still interested? There is corn in Egypt. Go and buy for us so that we will eat and not die. There is no record that they came back. As soon as they went there, their father later joined them. And for a while it looked like prosperity until there arose another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. Hallelujah. The one area where I saw real challenge in my life and ministry was the issue of finances. Miracles and the anointing and all of those things were there, but this finance thing. We held a crusade. Have you heard my story? A crusade that we were owing then 150,000. I know you may laugh now. The people setting the sound were there hearing me shouting and saying, God can do all things on the crusade ground. They saw the sick healed. It was none of their business. As soon as we wrapped up that crusade, they now said, no, what is it now? You cannot, the money to transport the people back to Zaria was not there. The money to pay for accommodation was not there was just by faith and I said God this can't be you this doesn't add up eventually I pleaded with somebody who gave me a check of 90,000 and I called them they collected it from Zaria they went straight to a bank in Kaduna and they found out it was a dot check they reversed immediately in anger and came back to meet me They said, no, this one, we are going to go and call the police. I said, for what? I'm not a criminal. Just give me time. And I said, God, this, this is not a good way to do ministry. For some of you right now, as you are standing here, the bills on your head will not even allow you to pray. Even if you lock the door, after three hours, we think you are praying. You are worrying. God, is this how my ministry will be? Listen to me. I'm not just trying to just talk about money. But you need this to find rest for God's sake. So that you can focus on the things of the kingdom. And don't let anybody tell you God cannot give you rest on that wise. You can enter your Sabbath. Believe me. Pastors, leaders, we have to pray. It takes a lot of prosperity to help you to be efficient in ministry. Now I know that there are several aspects of prosperity. I'm sure that your pastor has done a lot of teachings on that wise. My assignment is to pray that prophetic dimension. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer The helper of man mm. You are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer. You are Ebenezer. The prophetic is powerful. You can wave the door of lack and want goodbye. And believe me, it can wave you back. Never to meet with it again in your life. 
They heard the word just like we did, but they did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For someone here, don't just argue. Give God a chance and see if he does not bless you, that's fine. The person talking to you is not ignorant. Believe me, I understand business principles. I understand principles of productivity and value and relationships and investment and all of this. But I can tell you there is a prophetic dimension to wealth. You would cheat yourself and give yourself headache and slow down the pace of your achievements. If you want to rise the way men, men rise, what then is the excellency of the ministry of the Holy Spirit upon your life? How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you. When God becomes involved in your life, the equation changes. One plus one can equal to anything he says the answer should be. In the name of Jesus, the gates that open up to the realm of wealth and abundance, finding favor with men, being connected to the secrets and the riches of the earth, I pray and call upon my God, who is your God, and the God of your pastor in the name of Jesus may that gate be open for you 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 in business may that gate be open for you in ministry may that gate be open for you in your family, may that gate be open for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be Beulah and Hephzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the fragrance that comes out of your life be like the field that the Lord has blessed. I declare the blessing of the Lord upon you. Fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your word study life in the name of Jesus Christ and I decree and declare over you next year by this time you will return 10 times better for in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus I pray amen and amen quotes the 10 quotes for creating wealth as a career person number one we spoke about the need for you to start early and then we looked at the seasons of life and the importance of starting early number two we said you need to give it all it takes start early then give it all it takes number three get all vital certifications because the language that the marketplace understands is what certification and efficiency and track record number four network strategically because in every industry in every sector there are gatekeepers and we understood that you are not you don't go up you are brought up so the same way your parents brought you up there are people that god will use to bring you up so you need to network strategically and then number five you must understand the business of your career it's not just enough for you to be a career person. It's, under, it's very, very important for you to understand the business of your career. Because every time we talk about, for instance, what is a show business? There are people that know the show. There are people that know the business. Some people just wear bling bling. They are on social media, celebrity beggars. They are there to show wristwatch, to show chain, to show tattoo, and to show dreads, and to show all kinds of funny funny lifestyle but when the chips are down ordinary 100k they don't have ordinary 1 million they don't have but there are people that are not in the show but they are in the business they say go and show yourself we'll be making the money with your life and we've seen a lot of people that have signed away their destiny because they want to blow and i've told you before you don't blow anything that blows scatter balloon blow bomb blow you don't blow you grow and that's how they will sign away their life because they don't have understand there are people that wants to show 
And then a promoter will carry that and say, you want to be a footballer, no problem. I'm taking you to Europe. Sign. And then they will sign that I'm going to be paying you 500 pounds every week for the next 10 years. I will take you to Europe. I will take you there, give you accommodation, feed you, and get you a football club. But every month you'll be getting 500 pounds. And when the person is leaving Nigeria, leaving Ghana, leaving Kenya, 500 pounds a month, it's like a big money. Then you get there and they are collecting 500,000 on your head every month. And they are giving you 500. You now, you now begin to provoke. And did you not sign? Hello? So, it's not just enough to have a career. There are people that are accountants. They, have ch they are chartered accountants, but they can't charter Uber. They can't charter plane. They only know how to count other people's money. They don't have their own. Hello? There are people that say, no, you don't understand. I'm a medical doctor. You're a medical doctor. Yes, you are going on strike because of salary. Hello? Why? Because there are people that understand the profession, but they don't understand the business in the profession. So you are a lawyer and you are waiting to do charge and bay and to do affidavits. And that's your law. All the degree you gather is to do affidavits. Neighbors are fighting over 2,000. And that's the one you are going to do. That's all you, the law school you went to. No. In order for you to create wealth as a career person, you must understand the business of your career. One of our members came to see me and she studied French, she lectures in French in the university and she spent many, many years lecturing, doing all kinds of stuff, but she's still a civil servant with salary mindset and then she came, pastor, you know I've retired now, I don't have money and I said, the problem with you ma is that all your life you have been a teacher and all your life, you are a lecturer. You understand, Fred, but you don't understand the business of your career. I said, do you know that as someone that understands French, in Africa, we have only two major languages, English and French. I said, do you know you can be a consultant to embassies? I said, do you know that you can write books on French? How to understand? I, I began to tell her different things. He said, I didn't understand. I said, that's why schools have been killing you. You go to school, but academic education does not translate to financial freedom. So there are dimensions to your career where the money is. So if all you are doing in that career is to collect salary and you don't understand the business in the career, you will not be able to create wealth. And then number six, you need to save money regularly. And I think that's where we wrapped up on Wednesday, right? Number six. Okay, so save money regularly. And this morning, we started a series on developing a savings culture. And if you are not here this morning, get the morning session. Where I stopped in the morning was also something I said on Wednesday, and I will start from there now when it comes to savings. Please listen and listen well. If you don't save, you are not safe. What you save today saves you tomorrow. Not to save is foolishness. Why? Money is tripartite. Money is a spirit. Money has a soul. Money lives in a body. Repeat after me. Money is a spirit. Money has a soul. Money lives in a body. Now, every time you bring out cash from your pocket, that is not money. That cash you brought from your pocket is called currency. That is the body. I shall tell one word here. That is the cloth. The body of money. That's not money. It's called currency. Money is universal. Our currency is geographical. Hello? So, money is a spirit. Money has a soul. Money lives in the body. So, that currency in your purse, in your wallet, in your pocket, that's not money. That's the body of money. It's the body. The soul of money is the value of that money in the marketplace. So now that Naira is a thousand plus to a dollar and one thousand two hundred and something to a pound, it means that the soul of the Naira is weak. So the value you command in the market, that's the soul of money. That's why we talk about market forces. There are forces that affect the soul. Hello? 
And then the spirit of money is mammon. That's why I say you cannot serve God and mammon. But money is tripartite in another dimension. Money has a past, money has a present, and money has a future. Repeat after me, money has a past, money has a present, money has a future. So every time money comes into your hand, a portion of that money belongs to your past. To take care of the bills you have already incurred. A portion of that money belongs to your present. To take care of your ongoing obligation. A portion of that money belongs to your future. It's savings and investments. So every time you are eating every money that comes, you are eating your future. You are a witch. That's witchcraft. Hello? Shopping the future. If a woman eats her children, you call her a witch. So when you eat your future, who are you? A witch. So there are, there are many witches here to this one. Don't chop your future. Hello? Now, so listen, are you ready? Are you sure you are ready? There is nothing called future. There is nothing called tomorrow. It's a concept. Today is the tomorrow you spoke about yesterday. Today is yesterday's future. So every time you come to church with religious mindset, my future is bright, I will get there. Shh, mature no, is a lie. Your future is not bright. Hello? There is no bright future anywhere except a future you create. So how can you enter a future you did not create? Now, 10 years ago, you said your future is bright. Where are you now? Is it bright? Is it bright? But you, because you have entered an empty future because you ate today, yesterday. Because every money you are going to make in your lifetime is not given to you at once. Hello? It's broken into months. Broken into consistent income. So every time you collect that monthly income, you get that contract, you collect that money, your past, present, and future is inside that money. Every money you spend for that deal to click is inside. The one you will spend till the next deal will come is inside. The future, your children's school fees, your money when you are old, your retirement benefit, everything is inside. That is why when they set up a pension scheme, they say that you must deduct a portion of that money and put it in a scheme you cannot touch. It's by force saving for people that don't have financial intelligence. Hello? So you want to create what as a career person? Save regularly. Let saving become a part of you. Don't eat your future. Hello? Don't just be excited. Ah, my future is bright. What belongs to me will not pass me by. It will pass you by with a private jet. <laughs> Gone. Hello? My future is bad. My future is bad. What are you doing about it? Can you pack into a house you did not buy or build? When you hear the way you lay your bed is the way you lie on it. That's future. Which future are you talking about? Where is the future? Did you create a future? You say future. Which future now? Did you create any future? So future will just create itself and welcome you. And I cannot afford to save. You cannot afford not to save. Come next week Sunday, part two. Part two I will show you. First service or not second service. First service. <laughs> Hello. So you need to save. Everybody needs to save a minimum of 10 to 20% of their income. 10 to 20% of every money that comes into your hand should be saved. Because inside that, it's like, look, let me give you an example now. If you are eating orange now, after you finish eating the orange, there are seeds inside. Those seeds are not to be eaten. If you swallow it, you toilet it. But if you carry those seeds now and plant it, that's your future. So inside that orange, future came with it. Do you get it now? When you are taking apple, there is a seed inside. It's future. Everything that comes is past, present, and future. Hello? But when we don't understand this, you just come, you are looking for somebody to pray for you, anointing with oil to prosper. You know they work like that. Oh. Don't let all this religious nonsense put you in top. That's why many of you are angry with church, angry with pastor, because you have practiced religion, but you have not practiced Christianity. So answer now. So I go anoint you with oil now, and you go come prosper. What value are you offering to your world? Money flows in exchange for value. 
What is value? Solving problem, meeting needs, answering questions. So what problem are you solving? What question are you answering? What need are you meeting? Hello? You don't have corporate certificate. You want to get a corporate job. Hello? Now let me help your religious mind to understand the way this works. Can I anoint you to become a pilot? No, no, why do you, ah, what God cannot do? You can never go far in this kingdom if you don't have something you are doing with your hands. That idea of telling you, just give and you will prosper is a scam. Everybody prospering in this kingdom is doing something. When you have nothing to do, you make it difficult for God to bless you. It becomes easy for God to bless you when you have something to do. You can never prosper no matter the prophecies we give you. You must get something doing with your hands. Because when God comes to bless you, there must be a contact place. There is no spirit that can prosper prosper a man who is doing nothing. Don't find yourself idling away because somebody told you that you will deliver the nations, that you are an apostle to America and then you are sleeping, you are seeing dollars. We have a generation of people today who just lock themselves up in the cave and they pray in tongues for eight months and when they come out, they come out and become fake prophets and scammers because no matter how spiritual they are, they cannot deny the fact that they need clothes to wear and something to eat and when they can no longer get those things, they close their eyes and say an angel is talking to them and they say bring what you have you're having this in your pocket bring it out in psalm 128 verse 2 it says for thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands it says happy shall thou be and it shall be well with thee you will eat of the labor of thy hands prosperity does not begin and end with giving and receiving you've got to work with your hands don't allow your destiny to be scammed at old age you will weep in Proverbs 16 verse 3, it says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. In Proverbs 21 25, it said, The desire of the slothful killeth him. It said, For his hands refuse to labor. For the man that labors, he said, his thoughts shall be established. He said, but for the slothful, his desire will kill him because his hands refuse to labor. You want to walk in honorable and true prosperity. You must find something doing with your hands. That's the foundation of prosperity and prosperity with integrity. I told you from the beginning, for you to prosper, you must walk by mysteries and you must walk by instructions. If you violate these instructions, you will travel from coast to coast, receive all the impartation you will be shocked what your life will become. In Deuteronomy 28 verse 12, he said, For the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures, the heavens, to give thee rain unto the land in his season. And he said, To bless all the works of thy hands, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. So as you walk with your hands, he said, God will bless it, and then you will become a blessing to many nations, and you will not borrow. But the protocol of coming big enough to bless many nations is that there is a work of your hands that God blesses. And so if there is no work you are doing, there is nothing God will bless. In Psalm 1 verse 3, the Bible said, and he shall be like the tree, that's the righteous, planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. He said his leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. And so if you are doing nothing, there is nothing that will prosper. When God wants to bless you, he looks out for the works of your hands. And so a man who works with his hands is a man that is assured of the blessings of God. This is not just for Christians. They say, I cause my rain to fall on both the good and the evil. It's a natural law. That's why the people of the world are working hard and working smartly and they are making wealth in life. Making riches. Making money. You want to be part of those whose finances are established and who have dominion in the realm of finances. You must get something doing. The second way to prosper in this kingdom is by the covenant. God has a covenant of prosperity with his people. And the covenant he had with Noah is the covenant of exemption. That you will no longer be destroyed. And while you are yet being exempted, I will prosper you. And so he gave him a code for activating that covenant. He said, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter will not cease. That means so long as the climatic conditions are kept, if you want to prosper, keep sowing.